Welcome to our presentation of the software curriculum, which is started at Siemens and is now extended also to Siemens Hauseniers. Training is essential, especially in the current fast-paced world, and we see architects as one of the most important roles. With that presentation, we want to give you some insights into our approach to encourage you to think about the architect role and the training in your organization. And maybe you can apply our learnings in your context. Many experienced experts from different domains have jointly created and maintained this curriculum. And uh, my name is Rüdiger Kreuter. I am the trainer of the System Architect Learning Program. Since, many, since more than 30 years in Siemens, I spent many years in research as a system architect for public switching systems and in improving the way of work in Siemens. My name is Thomas Blum. I'm a part-time software architecture trainer, and my main work environment is the role of a lead software architect of magnetic resonance scanners at Siemens Healthineers. The lower row, you see the other authors of, the, of this article. Peter Zimmerer, he is the trainer of the test architect program. Matthias Backert is the facilitator in our learning organization and the moderator of the senior software architect program. Francis Paulisch is the head of the software initiative and the product owner for the whole curriculum. In the picture on the right, you see her with the team that received the Linda Nordrop Award for Software Architecture in 2019. And here you see the elements of the curriculum for software, system and test architects. It all started in 2006 with the development of the senior software architect program. In the following, the software system and test architect programs have been developed, always based on the already existing preceding programs. Over time, the software architect program was localized into different countries due to the high amount of participants. All these programs have content related to the core topics, including business understanding, requirements engineering, architecting, testing and quality and social skills. Social skills is very important because all the architects have to lead and motivate teams without formal power. For software architects, we support a career path from software architects to senior software architects, where the seniors are usually active in large, complex projects. As Rüdiger mentioned, we have four different trainings, which have some commonalities as well as differences. Coming to all of them is the overall structure. On that slide, you see the overall structure of our senior software architects program. Starting with a virtual preparation phase, it consists of four different workshops, each separated by the sp several weeks of long project phase. In the preparation phase, we focus on the current state of the participants and bring them to a common starting level for all the trainings. The first three workshops then focus on the different steps of an architecture life cycle how to establish the architecture, how to realize it, and last but not least, how to sustain the architecture over its lifetime. In the fourth workshop, we wrap up workshop one to three and provide a kind of outlook how the architect's role can continue in the future. Between the workshops, as you can see, we have the project phase with virtual sessions, homework to apply the knowledge, and written certification gates where the participants prove that they can apply their knowledge in their daily work. The capability aid at the end of the workshop is more on capabilities and social skills. To enable reuse between the trainings, we have based our curriculum on a flexible and extendable basis. We use well-known methodologies like PLE and applied it to our program. As you already heard, the curriculum consists of different trainings and different target groups. The picture on the left shows you the test architect and the senior software architect training. Both trainings, like the others as well, are based on our core asset base. However, contain due to different target groups, also variations and differences. Commonalities are, for example, joint projects where the participants get tasks to do, which are partially preparations for further lessons, but also tasks to understand the application of topics discussed in the lessons. 
Another commonality are the trainer guidelines, which help the trainers by still being able to apply their own training style out of their own expertise to establish comparable training approach. However, there are variations and differences as well. As already mentioned, the senior software architects training has four separate certification gates, while the other trainings only have one interview-based certification at the end. However, all certifications have in common that we focus on capabilities, the way of how the candidates act in their daily work, and less on pure knowledge about the training content. Any PLE endeavor starts with a commonality variability analysis. I mean, when I started to develop the system architect program, I also did a CV analysis. There are many commonalities between software and system architects. Both have to understand the domain and the driving business models. Both have to understand requirements and constraints and important stakeholders and have to involve them from the beginning for elaborating an architecture. But there are also major differences. From our software architects, we expect that they are experienced software developers and that they co can coach the software developers in their team down to the bits and bytes. But they also have to deal with the extreme flexibility and variability of software. Our system architects, on the other side, they have often to deal with many different disciplines, including software, electronic, mechanic, hydraulic, biochemistry, and so on and so on. They cannot be the experts in all these fields, but they need enough insight to involve experts from all these disciplines and make them work together as an architect team. And if hardware comes into the game, more late phases come like production, logistics, up to disposal of the system. And all of these phases have to be taken care about in the architecture. This variability had a significant influence on the selection of course content. You might wonder how such a rich set of training material can be kept up to date in our currently fast pacing world. Like in software architecture, applying HR thinking also helps us to master that dynamic environment. A key to that approach is a DevOps-like style where the people, the active trainers like me, who design the lessons also execute the sessions and therefore get first-class feedback from the customers, our participants. If we need to add a new lesson to a training, we start with a small first experiment. By adding that new topic as a small session to an active workshop, and by actively involving the participants, we evaluate the interest and relevance of that topic to the group. In case of positive feedback, that new topic will be incorporated into the program and eventually also become a core asset. Further support for this strategy comes out of the fact that most of the trainers are active experts in the real world projects. However, as you can imagine, if you add new trainings, you also need to retire some existing trainings, which might even already be outdated. For that purpose, we have different approaches. One is to move pre-existing content, if it did become more or less public knowledge, to my learning world. A Siemens might set of training content, which is accessible by all employees. Or move it to lower, more basic, as already mentioned at the beginning, training levels, in the training pyramid. However, obviously, if the content is already outdated, it will be completely removed from the core asset base. This process is not an action which is, will be planned at a certain point of time and executed once in a year, for example. No, it's an ongoing process, which is part of the so-called standard housekeeping activities. Running this curriculum for around 15 years now provided a huge amount of experience. An important success factor is that all training sessions need to be provided by experienced people. Teachers need to be able to deliver samples related to the content they provide and discuss. And that should be authentic and explainable in detail, so ideally its own experience. Over time, experience also showed that course participants change towards a more structured way of working and communicating. The common understanding and increased trust helped that software, system, and test architects can work more closely with less misunderstandings.
This finally led to a network of architects that has been built across all course participants. They started to collect and exchange know-how and experience, and they support each other. And it helped to strengthen the voice of the architect, not only in the organization, but also within their teams. One last thing we should not forget. Although we already have moved a lot of our curriculum's content from on-site to online trainings, COVID-19 forced us from one day to the other to offer all our training content in an online way or stop our education program for a longer time. During the first days, we have seen a lot of issues which seems not to be properly addressable online, like personal interactions, spontaneous discussions and spending, for example, a whole day on an important topic to not lose the focus on the central storyline. However, after some time, it quickly turned out that the online trainings also have their advantages, like avoiding time and cost-intensive travels, and, for example, also being able to spread some topics over a longer period to give the participants the chance to practice between the sessions. It's obvious, like in real software architecture, it is not possible to use the same training architecture on-site as well as online. For example, we had to restructure several lessons to cut them in smaller pieces, which then would also fit into the shorter joint space of time, which is usually available in an international training with candidates from the US, even from the West Coast, Europe and India. Additionally to that, we rebuilt our on-site training rooms in hotels, for example, now as an online electronic whiteboard with different breakout rooms to allow separate group work. The re results were then presented in an online plenum room. Last but not least, all the social interactions need to be supported to still give the participants the feeling of a group and network they are working in. One approach was to plan, for example, a joint meeting once a week without a fixed agenda to allow spontaneous discussions or just informal chat, like you would have it in a coffee break. Further networking was encouraged by hackathons, for example, one on, one on developing AI applications, which included active course participants and alumni. Finally, for one of our most recent trainings, our training organization prepared an online certification ceremony, followed by a small online party which got very good feedback from the participants. As a summary, with the architecture we have chosen for that curriculum, we are well prepared to master the challenges of our fast-pacing, technology-driven world, which we, would act, which we could actually prove with our quick adaptation to the COVID-19-enforced new normal. Yeah, and as you can see, we currently have more than 700 certified architects around the world. And you still have requests for more. This requires high resilience, flexibility and maintainability for this curriculum, similar as we need it in our products. Yeah, thank you for your attention and we are looking forward to answering your questions during the online conference.